I've said before that I'm older than your typical YouTube video game creator. I'm older than the Mortal Kombat franchise. I'm older than the original NES. I'm older than Pac-Man. Older than the original Atari. I'm even older than Pong. I'm 50, which means I'm about a year older than commercial video games themselves. Because of this, I sometimes get comments where some kid will hit me with a OK Boomer when they think I'm being out of touch. At first, I didn't think anything of it. I figured they were just using the OK Boomer meme figuratively, not literally, like saying, OK, Grandpa. And fine, it's no big deal. This is YouTube. We've all been called worse. But then I noticed a trend of people calling the original Doom a boomer shooter. And I realized there's an entire generation of kids out there who have no idea what boomer actually means or where the generational demarcation points are. Boomer just means old person now. And that makes it really confusing to discuss generational differences. So let's talk about the boomers. And then we're going to talk about who is really screwing up the video game industry these days. While we divide the generations up according to birth years, a generation is really more about culture than it is about age. The baby boomer generation is comprised of people born between 1946 and 1964. What really set these people apart wasn't their age, but their lifestyle. Earlier generations treated education like an optional bonus on the way to the workforce. They either had no public schooling or they left school in their early teens so they could help support their families by working in a farm or a factory. The boomers were the first generation to experience the full 12 years of schooling in significant numbers. Earlier generations were tightly connected to their extended families. It wasn't uncommon to grow up under the same roof as your grandparents, aunts, and uncles. The baby boomers were the first generation to grow up in the newly forming suburbs. For those boomer kids, family just meant the nuclear family. Mom and dad and the kids. Mass media, and television in particular, gave baby boomers a strong sense of cultural identity. Culture was homogenizing, making it possible for everyone to experience the same TV shows, the same movies, and the same music. When the boomers went off to college, something they were far more likely to do than their parents, they might travel a thousand miles away to a place they'd never been before, and when they got there, they would discover that they had more in common with their new classmates than with the families they'd left behind. That sounds normal to us now, but at the time, this was a very radical shift. The new generation was rejecting the culture of their parents and forming their own. This new phenomena was given a name, the generation gap. These days, we use the term to talk about the common divide between the old and the young, but back in the 1970s, this specifically referred to the tensions between the boomers and their parents. Incidentally, this is where the clothing chain The Gap got its name. To most of you, this should sound pretty familiar. Full K-12 through education, nuclear family, living in the burbs, distinct generational identity marked by particular mass media. That sounds like kids growing up today. And I think that's what makes the boomers so interesting. They were the first modern generation. Their childhood experiences have more in common with today's kids than with the generations that came before. The baby boom generation ended in 1964. Yeah, I know it sounds weird to say that the height of Beatlemania marked the end of the baby boom, but if the boomer period lasted any longer, then you'd have a bunch of boomer kids who had boomer parents. And that's not how generations work. People born between 1965 and 1980 are called Generation X. That's me. I realize that we're all just old people to the under 30 crowd, but our generations are pretty distinct. Gen X has its own TV shows, movies, and music. Okay, hopefully we've got the generations all sorted out, so let's talk about what this has to do with video games. Boomers might not be big fans of video games today, but their generation is the one that got the industry started. Boomers built those primitive early machines while Gen Xers like me were literally still in diapers. Boomers designed the first arcade cabinets and invented the first Gen home gaming consoles. It wasn't until the late 1980s that my generation was finally old enough to make our own contributions to the hobby. Which brings me to the idea of Doom being a boomer shooter. 
Doom came out in 1993. Here is the team that made Doom. By 1993, baby boomers were nearing 50. You'll notice that these guys are not 50. The same was true for most of the people who played the game. I was 22 at the time. I'm sure a few middle-aged boomers played a little Doom when they could steal a few minutes away from their families and careers. But Doom was overwhelmingly a game by and for the 20-somethings of Generation X. So when you call it a boomer shooter, you're off by about three decades. In fact, Doom was my generation's first major contribution to the hobby, so seeing it called a boomer shooter really stings. Some people try to justify the term by saying that it's a boomer shooter because it goes boom. Well, for one thing, all shooters go boom. That's kind of the point of the genre. Secondly, this is like saying the original Civilization is a millennial game because it covers millenniums of history. That's just confusing for no reason. Now, here I have to admit that language prescriptivism is a doomed undertaking. Yes, there are over a dozen better terms we could use for these games. But the term boomer shooter has stuck, and people are going to continue to use it regardless of how annoying or wrong it might be. I can't change that, but that doesn't mean it's not worth complaining about. And speaking of complaining, let's talk about the generation that's ruining this hobby. I began writing about games professionally about 14 years ago when I became a contributor at The Escapist. That was right around the point where the industry finished its first big round of consolidations that saw the big publishers gobble up all the smaller studios. At the time, most of those publishers were run by baby boomers, and so for years I've been referring to the industry leadership as boomers. But as I ran the numbers in researching this video, I realized that this isn't really true anymore. So let's do a quick CEO headcount and see who's running things these days. And just to be clear, I'm just focusing on Western developers here. The generational divide works differently in Japan, and I'm not qualified to comment on that culture, so I'm not including them in this list. Let's start off with the big one. Phil Spencer is the CEO of Microsoft Gaming, which means he's in charge of... Xbox, and a sizable chunk of PC stuff. He was born in 1968, which means he's Gen X. Tim Sweeney is the CEO of Epic Games. He was born just a year before me, so he's also Gen X. Bethesda is owned by ZeniMax Media. For years, ZeniMax was run by baby boomer Robert A. Altman, but Altman has since passed away, and ZeniMax is now owned by Microsoft, which means... Phil Spencer controls this one too. Take Two Interactive is run by Strauss Zelnick. He might not look it, but he was born in 1957, which makes him the first boomer on our list. Cartoon villain Bobby Kotick runs the slaughterhouse over at Activision. He was born in 1963, which means he's one of the youngest boomers out there. If he was any younger, he'd be Gen X. Oh, but wait, Microsoft just bought Activision and Kotick is probably on the way out? After the merger, this will be another super conglomerate for Phil Spencer to run. Ubisoft is the house of microtransactions, DRM, and NFTs, and that place is run by Yves Guillemot. Born in 1960, he's a boomer. CD Projekt is run by... Oh, no, this guy. You know, the last time I talked about this guy, a bunch of you yelled at me for mispronouncing his name. At the time, I found this clip where Jeff Keeley says his name. Welcome to the stage, the joint CEO of CD Projekt Red, Marcin Owinski. So that's the pronunciation I used. Keeley is a game journalist and is apparently friends with the guy, so I figured he would know how to say his name, but apparently not. I don't know why you're mad at me, but whatever. Let's see if a robot knows how to say his name. Marcin Owinski. Really? That's how you say his name? Man, you were way off. I'm never trusting you again, Geoff Kaigali. Anyway, Marcin Ivinsky was born in 1974, which puts him on Team Gen X. Andrew Wilson is running the loot box factory over at EA. Like Ivinsky, he was born in 74, so he's another Gen Xer. 2K Games is run by David Ismailer, who doesn't have a Wikipedia page. We don't know his exact age, and pictures of him are really hard to come by. Still, he's clearly not a baby boomer. 
Heck, is this guy even 40 yet? Is this our first millennial CEO? I don't know. Maybe this is an old picture or maybe he's another immortal like Strauss Zelnick. Whatever. Let's just assume he's Gen X and move on. Just to be inclusive, let's throw mobile slash social games developer King.com into the list. King is run by... Uh, oh. Okay, so King was brought by Activision, which was bought by Microsoft, which means this is another company that has fallen into Phil Spencer's hands. Is anyone keeping an eye on this guy? It seems like he could do a lot of damage if he wanted to. And finally, we have the wild card Valve. Like Bobby Kotick, Valve head honcho Gabe Newell is close to the line between Boomer and Gen Xer, landing just on the Boomer side. So there it is. That's the industry as it stands in early 2022. What a disappointment. I always hoped that the generational turnover would bring us a better class of leadership, but here we are. My generation is running the industry and things are as bad as they've ever been. To a certain extent, I think the failings of the Gen X CEOs are a lot less forgivable than the failings of their boomer predecessors. Video games didn't show up until boomers were in their 30s, and the industry didn't really take off until the generation was well into middle age. These people didn't grow up playing games. The hobby isn't personal to them, so I can see why they would look at games as just another disposable consumer product. But I can't give a pass like that to the Gen X guys on our list. Take Andrew Wilson, for example. He was 11 when the original Famicom came to the West, and 17 when the Super Nintendo dropped. He was 19 when id Software unleashed Doom on the world. Even if he didn't personally experience these things, he should have some appreciation of them through his peers. He ought to understand how games work, what makes people connect with them, and he ought to understand the deep impression a well-crafted game can leave on the audience which makes his constant assault on the hobby all the more offensive. It's nice that his team apologized for the disaster of Battlefront 2, but it's even more mystifying that they made the blunder in the first place. How could you not know how damaging loot boxes would be to the experience? How could you not know how offensive this would be to your customers? Your audience isn't some mysterious, unapproachable alien group. They're not strangers with a different language and cultural background. They're not on the other side of some impossible generation gap. Your customers are the people you grew up with. It's the culture you grew up in. You should know better. Being a Gen Xer that doesn't understand what gamers want is like being a millennial that doesn't understand smartphones. And this is what I find really depressing about the state of things right now. Today's gaming industry is one where you use a privacy invading launcher to buy a DRM locked game with always online single player where you use an in-game cash shop to buy loot boxes to gamble for NFTs as part of some god awful pay to win design. Video games are barely a hobby at this point. It's basically a bunch of morally and artistically bankrupt companies looking for the next grift. Okay, these companies aren't all that bad, and I think a couple of them actually try to do right by their customers, but still, the overall state of the industry is horrendous, and we mostly have Gen X to blame for it. What a disappointment. I guess we have to wait another 15 years for my generation to retire and hope millennials are better stewards of the industry when they get to the top.